but we also do not support structures that are anti-African because Uganda, one of the pillars of a Ugandan government ideology is Pan-Africanism. Yes? So you are a Pan-Africanist and you are busy arresting a, an African head of state and general whom you even invited for your party and say, I see, see he, he, here he is. Watch out. Kano Shaban Bantariza, the deputy government spokesperson's reaction, comes two days after the International Criminal Court issued an ultimatum of up to the 24th of this month to the government wanting it to explain its failure for arresting Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir while in Uganda for the inaugural ceremony of President Yoram Museveni. The notice dated 17th May and signed by Judge Mark Pradin and Judge Shang Ho Chung wants the Museven government to explain why it gave Bashir a leeway yet he is indicted. Colonel Bantariza says the Hague-based court has no right to direct any country on what it should do making the ultimatum invalid. They have their law, they have their reasons, they decide to do that. Okay, so they can't oblige us and they cannot give us an ultimatum. That's not possible because First of all, they would have no means to implement the ultimatum. Much as he does not support impunity, Bantariza says the Rome Statute is subordinate to Uganda's constitution and therefore any country would first look at national interests and relations with other countries. Our national interest, in spite of whatever provision there may be in the Rome Statute, okay, our national interests take priority. You see, politically, for example, Sudan are our neighbors, okay? And if we now arrested him mm, and handed him over, what would be the backlash? What would be the, what, what would be the implications? In his address during the inauguration ceremony at Kololo Ceremonial Grounds, President Museveni called the ICC a bunch of useless people and said he no longer supports the Hague-based court. Are these angered delegates from U.S. and Europe forcing them to walk away in protest? We lost interest in the ICC. ICC is not of our business. It's, it is a useless body. Elizabeth Todi, a spokeswoman for the U.S. State Department, said the delegation decided to attend the inauguration despite Bashir's attendance out of respect for U.S.-Ugandan bilateral relations, but made the decision to leave after Museveni's remarks. But the U.S. is not a member of the court. To Bantariza, this was comic based on the fact that no American is even accepted to be tried outside the American land. Because they have a law. They enacted a law in 2001 prohibiting any American from being tried for whatever offense anywhere in the world apart from the American soil. So if it's such a good thing, they support so well, so much, why are they not willing to be members? And why are they even going ahead a step further to legislate against an American being tried in the ICC? Uganda is a member of the ICC and as such is obligated to detain and turn over suspects wanted by the tribunal. Bashir faces two ICC indictments for atrocities linked to the conflict in Dafa where an estimated 300,000 people died and two million were displaced since 2003, according to UN figures. Bashir, however, rejects the ICC's authority and had been able to travel relatively freely in Africa and the Middle East, even to countries like Uganda and South Africa that are parties to the Rome Statute and are required to carry out ICC arrest warrants. Bashir also recently attended the inauguration of Djibouti's president, an event that was attended by U.S. officials. Just the Nachibule, WBS TV, Kampala.